Hello? Hi, can you hear me now? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Good, good. Uh, well, thanks for talking to me today. Yeah, no problem. Well, um, I'm the organizer of the uh, Richard Case and Radio Network Rally for All Lives. Um, I have uh, grown up here in Van Buren, and I graduated from high school here in 96, and I went off to uh, Poplar Bluff and started my radio career, and a few months later I became a stand-up comic, and that took a few years to you know, go pro with that. Um, then I moved to Cape Girardeau and uh, was on the radio there doing uh, nights on a classic rock station. Then I took uh, another couple of radio jobs in uh, parts of Southern Illinois, uh, all you know top rated and usually the um, top guy in my time slot. So, and I and I'm a Missouri Broadcasters Association DJ of the Year award winner in 1999. So uh, that's just a little bit of my background, but um, I've been back in Van Buren for the past year and a half or so, and just kind of uh, figuring out uh, what my next move would be necessarily as far as uh, careers go. And uh, the comedy thing started picking up once, you know, it's the type of thing you got to put time and effort into it to get anything out of it. But, um, and things were going good for about a year and a half or so. Then the coronavirus thing hits, and you know how the restrictions and everything that have come with that, so there have not been a lot of comedy shows. So I've uh, redoubled my efforts back on uh, uh, trying to get back on the airwaves. Um, part of that process is working out some of my uh, uh, kinks and bugs uh, in a podcast version of my show, but hopefully, uh, you know, in another few months, we'll find an actual uh, terrestrial radio affiliate. But, um, so as far as the rally goes, um, about two weeks ago, I was informed that a uh, local woman, uh, Abby Van Winkle, who, uh, by the way, uh, you know, I had her mom as a math teacher in high school, and uh, she was also a student teacher of mine in civics, so I'm not completely unfamiliar with her. That's the nature of a small town. Um, population 815 currently. So uh, about a week and a half ago, uh, I hear about this Facebook post, and I looked into it, and um, see, the, the phrase Black Lives Matter is very loaded. Um, it's immediately the type of thing that if you don't exactly agree with their position or their stance, then they're automatically going to jump to, oh, you don't think Black Lives Matter, and then it just escalates and gets worse from there, when in reality, you know, what we're standing up for, and, you know, I know that the that movement pretty much started up in St. Louis a few years ago with the Michael Brown Ferguson thing too, but um, it's you know all the facts are in and you know it's been five years and everyone knows that hands up don't shoot was a myth. Uh, Michael Brown uh, tried to rob a store and then the officer that answered that call, you know, Michael Brown tried to steal his gun and uh, he got shot for his trouble. I mean, that's <laughs> In, in a law and order society, you don't get to steal police officers' weapons. You, you, don't, you don't get to fall asleep, impaired, behind the wheel of a car. Sorry about that, I'm getting a message, but I'm ignoring it. But you don't get to, you don't get to fall asleep, impaired, behind the wheel of a car, and pass out, and block drive-through traffic. And then, when the cop shows up on that call to try to figure out what the situation is, and after... 30 or 40 minutes of being a total pro, and after you fail the breathalyzer test, you don't get to resist arrest, you don't get to fight the cops, and you do not have a right to steal that cop's taser and try to use it on him, and you can't expect to do that without facing some sort of consequence. Now, this is where the media, this is where they come in, because, well, that's, that's a lot of details that Eh, doesn't really fit in with what we're trying to push, which 
is the whole reason for the rally that I'm organizing is that we are for, uh, you know, I mean, it's a cliche, but all lives matter, period. White, black, brown, uh, what, tan, hazelnut, whatever, whatever color you want to call it, um, upright, walking human beings, you know, we all matter. Even Abby Van Winkle, you know, no one here hates her um, as much as I disagree with her politics, as much as I disagree with her stance, as much as I know that she's completely uninformed about the situation, no one here hates her, um, and if anyone has ever threatened her, um, you know, that's stepping over the line at that point. But um, we do disagree with her position, and we disagree with the entire premise that the movement Black Lives Matter, not the phrase, but the actual organized and financed political movement Black Lives Matter, we're against the premise that white police officers are targeting and killing black people for sport. No, that, sorry, sure. We is any like-minded individual who, you know, they watch five minutes of the evening news and they know that it's biased, and they know that it's slanted, but they also know that it's a hot topic, and they also know that if they ever bring it up in conversation that it's going to be a huge argument, so everyone leaves it alone, and whenever it's left alone, and whenever it's allowed to happen, you get things like Black Lives Matter, and you get things, I mean, and let us be frank, okay? I mean, if, if any of these protests would have stayed peaceful, that, that would be fantastic if they would have been on their side of the street with signs and they're loud and they're but they're pushing what they what they believe in a completely peaceful manner. Zero problems with that because that's America. However, these peaceful protests, some of them do not end so peaceful because they get out of control. People start look, it's not conservatives that are looting and rioting and setting cities on fire, what conservatives, and this is, I think is the we that you're talking about, or that I'm talking about, that you're asking me, is the conservatives, we, we see this, you know, on, on the few snippets of news that we can get that are, you know, legitimate, um, you know, that, that's not a deep fake doctored video, cities are getting looted and burning and, and, and there's riots and total, I mean, look at Seattle. Um, the mayor there, for three weeks, she caved into that stupid Chaz or Chop situation before that got out of control because she's trying to, you know, it's a, it's a real cynical attempt to try to curry favor with uh, a certain group just to get their vote. I think it's gross, and I think it's disgusting. But to get back to your question about the we, um, it's, it's, it is not necessarily... Republicans, it's not necessarily people who belong to a party, it's people who, who think along a certain train of thought, which is the rights of the individual, uh, the freedom to keep and bear arms, and the freedom to, if necessary, back up the police to make sure that this demonstration stays peaceful, because you got to understand, listen, I was talking with the chief of police the other day, um, just equipment-wise and manpower-wise, if, if this were to um, get out of hand, they're not equipped for it. Another thing that you have to look at is the local support for Abby Van Winkle's side of it is minimal. It's, it's close to non-existent. The local newspaper here, it's a weekly. Um, ads have been pulled. Subscriptions are being canceled. And her father just happens to be the guy who publishes the local newspaper. So um, people are quite upset about it, and but it's it's not against, you know, it, it when they say, oh, you don't think Black Lives Matter, automatically, again, it's a loaded statement, and it puts people on the defensive. Well, to follow up on your point about uh, back to the police officers, you know, what happened recently, evidence was already clear. There was a, uh, a protest around Mm -hmm. um, I've seen some online some people talking about doing that in front of county. However, um, the sheriff came out yesterday, or a few days ago, I don't know the exact incident, and said, hey, we don't need extra help. We don't want, um, that basically, 
was, you know, paraphrasing here, but the Kern County Sheriff was basically telling me, like, there's been reports that there's going to be antifa and BLM here. These are false. They're not even helpful. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I hope he's right, but, um, and, and I respect the sheriff, but I, I would not underestimate um, what they're capable of manpower-wise. And, and this, uh, as far as the other side goes, and to, to finish the point I was, I was trying to make a minute ago, the support for this locally on their side is minimal. What we're concerned about is the bust-in, outside, agitating element, the types of people that answer Craigslist ads to come be a paid protester. You know, you're going to get 500 bucks to stand out here in a town you've never been to and uh, raise a bunch of hell and stir up trouble, we'll give you 500 bucks for it. I mean, that that's the reality. That doesn't get reported. It doesn't make it into the evening news. So if it doesn't make it into the evening news, of course, it's not official. But those are the facts. And they're, I mean, those ads are out there for anyone to read. Um, as far as the, the sheriff saying that, uh, as far as the sheriff saying that Antifa isn't coming to town, um, great. I, I hope he's right. But, um, and if, if people... Even if people don't show up armed necessarily and they're just there, the sheer numbers alone are going to be enough to back up local law enforcement. Um, this is the bottom line. Um, I don't know if this will make it into the piece or not, but uh, the bottom line is this. That's not what we want. We're not, we're not looking. To, we are simply there, oh, Abby has this side. We don't agree with that, and we're going to represent the other side. And and that's just, and that's the bottom right. line. Yeah, and, you know, as a journalist and citizen of America, I'm speaking to you now, that is your right, that's your constitutional right to show up at all perspectives. Uh, you are allowed and should be allowed to voice their opinions as well. Now, but, now that is to say, that it, it, it's not going to necessarily be nice and friendly. I mean, it's going to be loud and overpowering, and it's going to be borderline obnoxious. But it. it It is uh, to the, you know, the, the common people, uh, the ordinary folks who aren't in the media, they, they would identify with it as a rally or a protest. To me, it's, it's that plus a radio stunt because, you know, this is all, it, this is also going to be, you know, my weekly podcast live in front of people. You know, it's, it's not a secret. It's not, I think it's going to be, someone's going to be there having it on Facebook Live, so it's, uh, and, and, you know, to be honest, it's also going to have a little bit more of a party atmosphere than what Abby has planned, because uh, it, it's, it's going to be a lot of laughs. It's going to have a real smart-ass attitude with it. Um, you know, a little bit of music um, and my commentary and also reading from the news that what doesn't get reported and basically giving the truth about Black Lives Matter, the movement. And, and see, that, that, that is a very important distinction to make. You have Black Lives Matter, the movement, and you have Black Lives Matter, the actual phrase. And the actual phrase, Black Lives Matter, it should have tagged onto it. Of course they do. What's your point? Now, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, Abby, you say that this is a... Yes, uh, Abby announced and organized her event first, and whenever I heard about it, I piggybacked on it. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and then I want to ask you a question. You, you spoke up about paid um, protesters that um, you know, have been hired for similar protests in the country. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen any of those ads that you talked about, specifically? I haven't seen um, ads concerning this one, only because I've been doing my own preparations for, for this thing coming up. I can only assume, based on what's happened in Minneapolis, based on what's happened in uh, Atlanta, based on what's happened in St. Louis, 
based on the Occupy movement from five or six years ago, where they're soliciting paid protesters for these types of things. Uh, specifically, have I seen it for Van Buren? No. Would I be shocked? Would I be shocked if they're out there? No. Not in the least. So the threat that you Well, yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention as well is Randy and Abby, you know, she said, I saw a lot of her stuff on this one. Like, all the social media about the event. It just kind of reminds me to see that there is pushback from the community, from the residents. Mm -hmm. Because she was the one who publicly posted asking if anyone would be interested in organizing what started off, what she originally worded as a Black Lives Matter protest. It went from a protest to a demonstration. It went from demonstration to, eh, maybe it's a parade. And now it's gone from parade to bake sale. Now, if it remains a bake sale and people are just, uh, you know, buying overpriced baked goods by these people and, and getting handed Black Lives Matter literature and if it's not out of control and doesn't erupt into total chaos, that's fantastic. I hope they make a lot of money. I hope it's a success for them. I don't expect it to be, but the reason that she's attached to it is because she is the one who initiated it and because her dad is the one who owns the local paper. You know, Social media is all about me. Look at what I'm doing. Look at how good of a person I am. Look at the good things I'm doing. Look at what I'm donating to. Me, 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 me. So she can say that, um, you know, it's a Black Lives Matter thing, but it's very much an Abby Van Winkle thing. But here's the other part. Unlike her, uh, I will be frank and admit to you that, uh, yeah, I am trying to grow my audience. I'm trying to let people know that we're fans of mine on the radio 20 years ago and fans of my comedy act that I'm not only still here, but when it comes to things like this, that uh, I will step up and I will, and it, it's not just, it, it's not just a matter of doing it for the sake of doing it. There's a point behind it, but the attitude behind me trying to do this event, it is going to be as informative as it is, and as truthful as it's going to be, it's going to be a hell of a lot more fun. That's the bottom line. Abby Van Winkle's event doesn't sound very fun to me. You know, her and, and see, this is the thing, while she has been very friendly and trying to straddle both sides of this fence, people that come to her defense, you know, they're the first ones to start accusing people on my side, who I would call we, us, um, they don't hesitate to bust out, you're a racist, you're a sexist, you're a big, you're a homophobe, you're a Nazi. It's always those things. Um, you know, people resent being called things like that when they're not true. And uh, when you have people that are uh, friends of Abby Van Winkles who make um, generalizations about a small town saying uh, things like, you know, Van Buren's uh, uh, safe for all races if you're a straight white man. You know, that in itself is a stereotype. But they're so ignorant they don't even understand that. Um, and, and Van Buren, you have to understand, is uh, demographically, it's, it's pretty much white, but the... Uh, I, I don't even like the word minority. To me, minority sounds degrading. 
Um, I, I don't like categories. I don't like things like black and white and, and Hispanic. I, I hate categories like that because I don't, I don't look at people that way. I look at them as you're either an American or you're not, regardless of your skin color, period. Um, I, and I, I hate being labeled something that I'm not by a child, essentially, who is, frankly, does not know what she's talking about, can barely afford liquor, and is uh, seeing herself publicly embarrassed by this thing more and more every day. And, I mean, Abby herself? At one point, uh, she said something about uh, um, small towns having small minds. Um, specifically, um, she's been uh, very uh, backhanded about her comments, saying things like, well, I'll pray for you, and Jesus loves you, and things like that. But the people who come to her defense, that comment on posts that she makes, that she likes, and will, you know, show interaction with, these are the people who are like, oh, and I bet you have uh, uh, the Mein Kampf book on tape, or uh, your racism is showing, or how does it feel to be such a racist when they don't... To, to, be, to be specific, it's not just other people. They are friends of hers. And she is interacting with these comments. So, while she is not saying it, and, and and this is where social media is a bitch, so I want to be crystal clear about it. She's not saying it, but she agrees with the sentiment. And it's traceable, and you can see it for yourself. That's a fact. Now, one thing you did say is that Uh huh. Um, it's not going to be fun because they don't have a sense of humor. They're, they're, they're taking what is a non-existent issue, again, they're, they're taking, let, let, let's start where the argument starts. The premise is, white racist cops are targeting black people for sport. Uh, let, oh, let me be more specific. The premise is, white racist cops are targeting unarmed black people for sport. That's the foundation of it. That's the start of Black Lives Matter. Fast forward to five years later, and here's Abby Van Winkle, and she wants to enlighten everyone about uh, how big of a racist they are and how, how, how prejudiced they are. Um, and she's, she's sinking into a, a, a subject that essentially does not exist. It doesn't exist, because here's the reality. White cops are not targeting unarmed black people for sport and shooting them because they're black. That's a lie. Total lie. But that's the premise that the news perpetuates. That's why we're organizing the rally. And as we're getting that point across, it's going to be a lot more fun because I'm going to be making fun of the entire thing. Because here's another thing that people have totally forgotten about. People have forgotten how to laugh. People got to lighten up. People have to understand that it's in the darkest of times that when humor is needed the most. And while I've got a point to make, and while I have facts to back it up, people know what to expect from me. It may not be the funniest thing around, but it's going to be way funnier and more entertaining than hers. And because... She, I don't expect them to have a sense of humor about anything, ever, on any topic, this one or any other one. That's how they live their lives. You know, they. this is what people have forgotten. Everyone and everything can be made fun of. Let me repeat that. That's a quote. Everything and everyone can be made fun of. 
There are no lines. There are no rules. Everything is on the table. Um, it's all a matter of how you pull it off. It's all a matter of how you present it. And, you know, uh, it, it better be funny if you're going to do it. But, like I said, in the darkest of times, that's when people need humor the most. You know, when two soldiers are under fire in a war, and uh, they're not sure how they're going to make it out of that situation, um, you will hear the darkest of jokes. You will hear the most inappropriate things said in the name of humor to diffuse this horrible situation. That's humor's purpose. Humor's purpose is to burst bubbles. Humor's purpose, as George Carlin said, is to intentionally find the line and cross it. That's my job. They're trying to say, there's a line that can't be crossed and it shouldn't be crossed, and I'm there to say, I'm crossing it. Well, I, I really, um, really appreciated your input today and your perspective because I did want to show very different perspectives from this community I and mean, not just speak to the organizing community, those attending the Abbey's rally, you know, because there is this tension going on. So we, we really did want to tell the whole story. And with that, I just want to give you, you know, one last opportunity to talk about your personal feelings towards this event that Abby is holding on Saturday. Well, I hope that Abby's event is a success. I hope that she gets the result that she wants and not the result that we're expecting. Um, um, I'm expecting some level of trouble from some outside agitator at some point. It's probably on an individual basis, if I'm being perfectly honest. But, you know, someone made a comment the other day, or, or yesterday, that, you know, we're trying to take away her freedom of speech. In reality, this is America in action, as the founders envisioned it. Abby has a position. We have a position. We are not trying to um, necessarily put her out of business. We are not interested in shutting her event down. Um, we hope they sell a lot of baked goods. And we hope that it is the peaceful, loving event that they are advertising it to be. That's my genuine hope. But, you know, I, I'm just a cautious guy. Now, there's been a lot of people that have been talking about their concern that there could be looting and rioting because of Abby's event on Saturday. Do you believe that looting and rioting is something that would happen uh, at this event in Van Buren on Saturday? <laughs> Not with our population. Why is that? There wouldn't be any chance of them getting away with it. What, what my question is, do you think that that's actually a possibility? Of course. If I got to boil it down to two sentences to, to give you a nice little caplet is, you know, uh, no one hates anybody, and we hope that their event is peaceful and everything. But we are going to be there, and we, we do have a side to present to, and we're going to be every bit as peaceful. Maybe not as loving, but just as peaceful. Do you expect people at the All Lives Matter rally to have firearms? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, that that's a 50-50. Is that something that you don't know what planning on? No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I uh, like I said. I, I think just the sheer numbers alone, the the presence, is going to get the point across. But it would be irresponsible to not be prepared for it. So it'd be irresponsible to not have some higher percentage of Uh, yeah. All right. You have a good day. Thanks for reaching out. Yes. Bye-bye.